Hi everyone, and welcome to ACT Math Prep with Desmos Hacks. Today, I'm going to be working through problems 41 through 50 that can be found on the TestNav website. These problems are from a retired ACT test and you can find them all below in the description. The purpose of this video is to help you get the ACT score that you want. So my suggestion to you is to try these problems first and then watch my videos to see A, if you're correct, and B, to help give you some shortcuts using Desmos along the way. Let's go boost your ACT score. Question number 41. The equation 24x squared plus 2x equals 15 has two solutions. What is the greater of the two solutions? This is a quadratic that you have to solve, and I think this is a great opportunity to use Desmos to do some work for you. Click on the Desmos graphing calculator and type the equation in. 24x squared plus 2x equals 15. It looks like the two solutions are negative 0 0.833 and 0 0.75. And it's asking which one is the greater of the two solutions. This is the greater 0 0.75. And 0 0.75 as a decimal is 3 fourths. But if you don't know that, just come here, type 0 0.75, come to this fraction button, and you'll see that that is 3 fourths. So this is answer A. And it's a question number 41. Look how fast that was to complete that problem. Question number 42. Which of the following expressions is equal to the sine of 60 times the cosine of 30 plus the cosine of 60 times the sine of 30? Now, traditionally, you'd have to know that this is some sort of a trig identity and you'd have to know how to work with it, but not with the Desmos graphing calculator. Let's come up here and click on this. And I want you to know that the Desmos graphing calculator defaults to radians, which is a way that you can measure angles. And the way that we're measuring angles right now is in degrees. So click the wrench and make sure that this says degrees. Now we're going to type this expression in and see which of the answer choices is equal to it. Ooh, okay, this is nice. We're getting an answer of one here. So we have to figure out which one of these is equal to one. And you don't know how I have to know anything about the sine or the cosine of any angle measure. Let's start at the top. Cosine of 60 minus 30, and I'm just going to simplify that in my head to 30. That's 0 0.866, not that. Let's do the cosine of 90 because that's 60 plus 30, option B, zero, not option B. Sine of 60 minus 30, which is 30, negative 0 0.5, that's not correct. The sine of 60 plus 30 is 90, and that gets me to 1. And I'm going to stop there because I want to save time. So this is option D. Question number 43. What is the area in square units of a circle that has a circumference of 12 pi units long? For this problem, we need to work with two circle formulas. The first one we're gonna write down is the circumference. The circumference of the circle is two pi r, where r is the radius of the circle. The goal is to find the area, and so we also need that formula. The area of a circle equals pi times the radius squared. So what we need to find is the radius. We're given the circumference is 12 pi, so I'm gonna plug that into this equation. 12 pi equals 2 times pi times the radius. To get r by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 2 pi because 2 pi is connected by multiplication. This makes a 1, and r is left all by itself. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and pi divided by pi is 1, so I'm given the radius is 6. Now I'm gonna go plug this value, six, in for r over here. Area equals pi times six squared. Notice that all of these answer choices have a pi in them, 
So I'm just going to simplify the six squared part. So I have pi times 36. Multiplication can be switched around. Pi times 36 is the same thing as 36 times pi, and that is option D. Question number 44. A barrel contains 25 liters of a solvent mixture that is 40% solvent and 60% water. Lee will add pure solvent to the barrel without removing any of the mixture currently in the barrel. So the new mixture will contain 50% solvent and 50% water. How many liters of pure solvent should Lee add to create this new mixture? So right now we know that the barrel contains 25 liters of a solvent mixture where 40% is solvent. So let's figure out how many liters are the solvent. So let's do 25 and 40% is solvent. So I'm just gonna write solvent right here real quick. And that's 10 liters. Let's do the same thing for water. We have 25 liters to start times the 0 0.6, which is 15 liters. And this makes sense because 10 plus 15 is 25 liters. What we need to figure out is how many liters of pure solvent should be added to the new mixture. Well, right now it's at 10 and I want it to be 15 because I want them to be 50-50. So if I add five liters, that's going to get me to 15 liters. That is option B. Question number 45. For all x does not equal plus or minus y, x over x plus y plus y over x minus y equals. What we have here is we have a set of two fractions. And to add fractions, we need common denominators. So this doesn't have an x minus y part, and this one doesn't have an x plus y part. Let's make those common denominators. This term needs this x minus y part. And so I can make common denominators by multiplying by what I like to call a fancy number one, x minus y over x minus y, because anything multiplied by one is itself. And now I have this missing part. Plus, now I'm taking this term, y over x minus y, and it needs the x plus y part on the denominator so I can add them together. What I do to the bottom part of the fraction, I have to do to the top, multiplying by this fancy number one. So both of these have the same denominator now, x plus y times the quantity x minus y. And now I'm gonna do some distributing. x plus x is x squared, x minus y is negative xy plus y times x is yx, but I'm gonna flip it around xy because then these terms look identical. And y times y is y squared. These make a zero. And on the top, I have x squared plus y squared left over. And looking at my answer choices right now, the only thing that looks like it's going to work is this x squared plus y squared because it appears that I have something on the bottom. But let me show you how that is equivalent to this. I'm going to distribute x times x is x squared. x times negative y is negative xy. y times x is xy. And y times y, and there's a negative right here, is negative y squared. So that makes the zero. So you see the bottom is just left with x squared minus y squared, which for sure leaves me with answer choice E. Question number 46. Mary, James, and Carlos sold one fourth page advertisements for the school yearbook. Mary sold twice as many as Carlos did, and James sold three times as many as Mary did. What fraction of these advertisements did Carlos sell? So for simplicity, let's just say Carlos sold one. We can also create some equations. So we know that Mary sold twice as many as Carlos, and we know that James sold three times as much as Mary. So if Carlos sold one, Mary sold two times one or two. 
And James sold three times as many as Mary, and that would be two. And three times two is six. What fraction did Carlos sell? Well, he sold one out of the total. One plus two plus six. And one plus two plus six is nine. So this answer here is A, one ninth. Question number 47. In a window display at a flower shop, there are three spots for one plant each. To fill these three spots, Emily has six plants to select from, each of a different type. Selecting from the six plants, Emily can make how many possible display arrangements with one plant in each spot. Note, the position of the unselected plants do not matter. Let's make three spots for the flower arrangements. One, two, three. There are six plants to choose from for the first one. And let's say that we put one there. So now we only have five to choose from. So we can pick one of the five plants to go here. Now we only have four plants to choose from. So we can pick one of those four plants to put here. If we multiply these all together, we're gonna get our total number of choices. So six times five times four. Six times five is 30 times four is 120 choices, which is option D. Question number 48. The quadratic function F and triangle MPQ are graphed in the standard XY coordinate plane below. Points M, 2A, 5B, N, 4A, 9B, and P, 6A, 5B are on F, this quadratic equation. Point Q, 4A, 0 is not on F. 48 asks us, in terms of A and B, what is the area in square coordinates of triangle MPQ? What does in terms of A and B mean? That means that you're simply going to have A and B in your solution. So the goal of this is to find the area of the triangle. So this looks really scary, but all you're doing is 1 half base times height because that's the area of a triangle. So we have 1 half, we need to find the base. So this is tucked upside down. This is our base, and we need to figure out that length. That length goes from 2a to 6a. And so there is a difference of 4a between those values. 2a plus 4a equals 6a. So let's plug that in here. And the height goes from here to here. So that, it goes from 0 to 5b. We can put 5b in for h, the height. Now all we're going to do is multiply. 1 half times 4 is 2, times 5 is 10. I'm multiplying all the numbers, and I have an a and a b, a, b. Option B. Question number 49. Point M will remain fixed. That means it'll stay in the same spot. And point Q will move to the right along the x-axis. So this point right here is going to be moving in this direction. As Q continues to move to the right, which of the following statements describes what will happen to the slope of MQ? In these problems, I think it's really nice to just put some numbers in. So let's just let B equal 1 and A equal 1. And then in that case, along the x-axis, we have 2, 4, 6, 8. And same thing here, 2, 4, 6, 8. Let's play with some ideas of slope because it's asking what's going to happen to the slope. The current slope of the line, and let's recall that the slope, m, is the change in the y values over the change in the x values. So right now, our change in y is a distance of 5. And it's going down from left to right, so I can put a negative here over my current change of x is 2. Now let's say that this point moved here. So now we have this new line segment. Let's calculate the slope of that. It appears that the rise stays the same, negative 5, but this increased to 4. Now, if we need to see some decimal values to see what's happening here, 
This is equivalent to negative 2.25, and this is negative 1.25. So these values are increasing, okay? So let's go look and see what happens here. A says it will decrease and eventually be negative. Well, these were increasing, so it's not A. B says it will decrease but never be negative. Well, again, it's not decreasing, it's increasing. It definitely didn't stay the same. D says it will increase, okay, that's true, but never be positive. And that's appearing to be true for D because no matter what we do, this line is always going down from left to right. So in this case, it says it'll eventually be positive. Well, that's not going to happen. So D it is. Woohoo! We made it to problem 50, the last question in this set. One of the following values is equal to F of 5A. Which one? Okay, so here's our graph. And we need to find 5A. Well, that's right here. We're looking for the spot on the graph that has this X value. What's its output? So we're going to come up here, find that spot, look over on the Y axis. It looks like this has an output value of 8B, which is option E. All right, you guys nailed these last 10 questions. We only have one more set in all of this practice. So in my next video, we'll be doing 51 through 60, okay? So you guys got this. Keep working hard. If you're this far in the video, I know you can do it. We'll see you there on that video.